Alright guys, uh, before we get stuck into this video, the whole preparation, I thought I would just talk briefly about galvanic corrosion and electrolysis. Uh, you'll see in this video, my boat had a pretty severe case of electrolysis resulting from a number of stray currents that I was able to uh, later diagnose once the boat went back into the water. I'm going to do another video on this specific topic. It's quite technical and there's a lot to, um, to talk about, um, but I'll basically walk through how I was able to troubleshoot my issues and put some protection in place to make sure I, uh, I don't have this problem again. Uh, but with this specific problem that I had of stray current, you can see on my boat, it basically caused a failure of the paint system uh, from any sort of protruding or leading edge. So the rear sort of trim tabs, the welds, um, the rudders, the shaft sort of A-frame assembly, and you can see along the shafts, um, it was basically where the electrolysis was trying to ground itself through the, uh, the electrolyte being salt water and uh, return to ground. And doing so, it caused the paint system to fail around those areas. So galvanic corrosion uh, is not an electrolysis. Um, a lot of people talk about you know, either or, uh, referring to the other issue and not really understanding the difference between the two. But galvanic corrosion is uh, basically going to occur when dissimilar metals touch each other or they're electrically connected by a conductor and uh, they're immersed in an electrolyte. So in our case, uh, salt water uh, is an electrically conducted fluid and it's an, ele it's an excellent electrolyte. So it doesn't matter if you have a boat or a dock or anything that's under salt water especially, you're going to be dealing with galvanic corrosion. Uh, and when this happens, this is where you're going to have an electrochemical reaction that will occur and one of the metals being the least noble metal will corrode at a faster rate than it normally would than the other more noble metal. So Gavet corrosion, look, if it's not managed, will damage or destroy your underwater metals. Um, so that's your hulls, uh, which can lead to pinholes and further pitting and holes, uh, your shafts, your props, your motor legs, your dock hardware, potentially your ground tackle or your mooring hardware, if there is a way for that hardware to um, electrically connect or conduct to the boat. So. You can manage galvanic corrosion a number of ways. Um, ideally, in a perfect world, you would isolate the corroding metal from the seawater uh, by painting it or coating it. Um, and you can do that with certain things, but you can't do that with a lot of uh, metals below the waterline, uh, which wear and rub and whatnot. So, um, you know, the, the second alternative or the, the second method of managing galvanic corrosion is to install properly bonded sacrificial anodes. And those anodes are exactly that, they're sacrificial. They're designed to be least noble out of all the metals below the water line. They're made from zinc, aluminium and, or magnesium and usually a mixture of two or three depending on the material of your boat. So an aluminium boat will use one variety of anode, a steel boat will use another variety of anode and they will protect your more noble, um, more noble metals like your stainless steel shafts your bronze props, with the theory being you're better off to replace $50, $100, $200 worth of anodes than $5,000, $10,000 shafts and props every year. So uh, electrolysis, all right. so electrolysis or stray current corrosion, it's effectively the same thing. Uh, now look, I'm no expert on this, but this is what I know. Uh, but electrolysis occurs when there's an electric current uh, that strays from its path due to a wiring fault. So metal hull boats are particularly at risk um, because the hull is conductive and uh, stray wire or connections will use the hull as a ground. But any boat is at risk. If you have stray current that's burping to the motor and it's going to run through your shaft and your prop, uh, even if you've got a fiberglass hull, your shaft and your props are still going to um, corrode at a rapid rate. So with stray currents, there's obviously two types of currents. There's AC and DC. So when you're dealing with stray AC currents, it's usually going to result from uh, a faulty shore power wiring system somewhere. So the fault might be on your boat, 
Well, sadly, uh, it actually might be on a nearby vessel that's unfortunately trying to use your underwater metals and your shell power connection as a path to earth or ground. So a lot of people uh, talk about the term dirty power in marinas, and it's really common in marinas. The good news with this um, form of electrolysis is it's relatively easy to protect yourself with the installation of a uh, galvanic isolator or better yet, an isolation transformer. Uh, in my case, I don't have an AC system, so I don't actually have to worry about this. The other type of stray current corrosion uh, that you might have to worry about is DC currents. So again, this results from a fault in your wiring system. Uh, there's almost an endless potential causes, but usually they can be traced down to a faulty accessory or a part. Um, or where exposed wiring has shorted uh, or found a way to ground itself uh, to the hull or to a part that is attached to the hull like your engine. Um, so instead of the current flowing through the cable from the source to the load uh, and back to the source, it's going to take the path of least resistance. So it may flow from the source to the load, ground itself to the hull and use the hull as the pathway back to the source. And that is what, i.e. what is going to drive or fuel your stray current corrosion, your electrolysis, and that is going to lead to the um, damage and loss of your underwater metals at a much more rapid rate. So um, yeah, with that, we'll uh, get cracking on to the rest of the hull restoration. Alright guys, before we get stuck into the videos, I thought I'd just spend a little bit of time explaining what I'm trying to do with uh, sorting out the paint below the waterline. So, um, look, to make it really clear, look, my objective here isn't to achieve perfection. There's, the boat's still pretty new to me, there's a lot of money and a lot of time that needs to be uh, spent uh, sorting out a lot of issues with the boat. So what I'm trying to do here is basically treat any areas of electrolysis or any areas where there's exposed steel that's starting to corrode and basically take them back to bare metal and sort them out to just prohibit corrosion uh, for any further. Uh, if I'm really loving the boat, then I will pull it out, I will sandblast it and do the paint properly, but it's not what I want to do from day one until I know everything else is sweet. So, um, I reached out to a couple of professional painters uh, who have experience obviously painting boats and just got their tips for the best plan of attack with the problem I've got. So what we came up with was basically to prepare the old antifoul uh, that had good adhesion to the hull um, by wet sanding that and I used uh, 60 grit uh, pads on my, on my pneumatic orbital sander and it was just a wet sand so we just used a hose and a squirty bottle. Really really grotty work, I probably wouldn't do that again in a hurry. Uh, I'd probably use a um, like an orbital sander hooked up to a dust extraction system, that'd be a lot better. Um, so once we sanded back the old antifoul, we got stuck into it pretty hard and really brought it back. I then ground back the areas of electrolysis to bare metal. I uh, did that with a uh, special rotary bit that I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, and an angle grinder in some areas that were hard to get to. I then applied three coats of uh, two-part epoxy to all those metal surfaces that were exposed. Uh, so I worked in patches and basically tried to get the epoxy onto the bare steel very quickly, uh, so within about two to four hours. Uh, so once those uh, areas had three coats on them, I then applied uh, two coats of a vinyl-based prior over the epoxy. So all those surfaces had five coats of uh, epoxy and vinyl primer so that had a pretty good barrier coat at that point. Now because we weren't sure what the original um, antifoul was uh, we were a bit worried that the new antifoul I was going to apply might um, might not be compatible with the old antifoul so the best course of action here was to basically apply the vinyl based primer uh, to all the old antifoul basically paint the whole boat below the waterline uh, which would bond really well to the old antifoul and also give the new antifoul a good surface to adhere to. So I applied uh, three coats of antifoul to the boat. Um, I probably only need two, but the antifoul I bought only came in 20 litre drums and I had plenty of it. And I decided, look, I'll start with three good thick coats of antifoul and that'll give me a good foundation to lay up more antifoul, you know, over the years to come when I pull the boat out for maintenance. Good morning everybody, uh, another beautiful morning down here in Northport Marine in Frio. 
So, uh, yeah, such a beautiful spot. Got down here nice and early. It's about 5.30 to try and beat the heat. It's going to be another stinker today, about 39 degrees. So, it'll be good to get stuck into a few things early. So what we're going to be doing today is getting stuck into the uh, the anti fowl. So basically, I've got my brother-in-law Nico. He's going to come down and give me a hand today. We're basically going to sand the whole um, hull below the waterline. Um, basically, all the, the original anti fowl. Um, do a wet and dry sand with the orbital sander, uh, and basically try and bring the good anti fowl back into a surface that we can recoat with new anti fowl and. Um, any areas where there is electrolysis, we're going to grind that back and see how we go. Getting that back to white metal and uh, get ready for some epoxy uh, primer, another vinyl seal underwater primer. All right, so we've got the uh, all the high areas like the welds and any nuts and bolts or any scuppers, grates, masked up. So when we're sanding, we're only going to sand the flat parts of the hole. We're not going to accidentally grow sand back any of the, uh, the high spots of the welds with the orbital sander and go back to steel. Uh, so what happens, we'll do everything with the orbital sander, any flat surfaces with the orbital sander, just cut the anti fowl back so we can recoat it. Uh, there, but obviously where we've got the electrolysis issues, we're going to take them uh, right back to bare metal and deal with them on a, on a spot by spot basis. So hopefully that'll save a little bit of work, but it's slowly starting to come along and uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so today we are going to continue with the um, <coughs> prepping of the anti-fowl um, and continue to sand all the below water line areas. So um, yeah, it's good. So things are progressing pretty well behind me. You can sort of see we've done the first wet sand. Um, we've just got to dust all of this stuff down and we're basically about halfway through. So. Today's going to be one of the yucky days. We were underneath the boat, wet sanding, all the stuff's flying back in your face. Like real, real desirable, uh, real desirable work. Um, but yeah, we're going to carry on with that and that's going to be good. So uh, with a bit of luck, we'll get all the sanding finished today and we'll be able to wipe it all down and get all the, um, the residual dust and all the old antifoul dust off. Uh, and then we're going to start to grind back the spots of electrolysis um, back to steel so we can get the epoxy primer on that and then we're going to run through and just do that stage by stage to make sure that what we're grinding back we get the epoxy primer on it within the required time frame at the, within the required time frame so we don't get any surface rust or any spot rust start to um, start to appear before we get the primer on. Uh, yeah so that's going to be good so areas like this we were sort of underneath <laughs> Up in here, you can sort of see this is where we've got the electrolysis, and this is, you know, in various degrees of severity throughout the boat. So, see there's some stuff above me. Um, I am in two minds about this because there's some areas where you can actually see that there is a little bit of spot rust starting to appear. So, it's probably just started to do that as we've sort of lifted the boat and we've had it out of the water. So, those areas definitely need to come back to um, come back to be a steel so we can prime them properly. But there are other areas. Like, like this, it's a little bit hard to see, I'm trying to film and do it here. But basically, you know, it's only sort of started to push away the, um, the anti-fowl surface uh, layer of paint and just started to get into the, <clears throat> the primer. Now the problem is with electrolysis, when it happens, it, it works from the metal out, so it gases and traditionally you'll see bubbles and, and you know, swelling and and well, no, I'm really not seeing that here. I'm gonna really get stuck into this with a chisel, just see what's behind some of those, um, some of that primer. But I'm, re I really don't know if we need to go back to bare metal with that. I'm almost tempted to sand it right back, uh, get a lot of the loose anti fowl off, and possibly just give it a quick prime uh, without going back to bare metal. Just leave the original primers still there, the original undercoats and just see how I go over the next two years. When I pull the boat out in uh, 18 months, two years time for its bottom paint again, we'll have a look and see if the um, <clears throat> if there's been any further deterioration because ultimately I do want to sandblast this boat um, below the waterline and probably the whole exterior of the hull and redo the bottom paint and redo the exterior paint properly. Um, but I don't want to spend the 10 to 15, possibly 20 grand doing that until I know that this boat is a good boat, I love it, and um, it's exactly what I want. So yeah, we're just gonna 
continue on today, get the bottom paint sanded back, the anti foul sanded back so it's ready for a reco, and uh, probably tomorrow start grinding back the areas that we know we need to grind back to metal and get some epoxy primer on that, and hopefully it'll be ready for bottom paint. So, very exciting. Giddy up. Alright, big milestone. The, uh, the whole boat below the waterline has officially been sanded. All flat surfaces, all welds by hands, even the uh, sea cocks, the gate valves, all of that. We just also had a go at the, uh, the new grinding bit. I'll uh, lift it up at the top of the boat. I'll uh, put a link to what it is and I'll show you in another video what that is. But we've been able to take some of the electrolysis spots back to bare metal. That, that, that bit is just phenomenal. Like it is so, so good. If you have a look here, that took about 20, 30 minutes slow going only because it's just got a few little dents and slips here, both taking a hit there. That's taking it back to prime white metal, you know, and that's just as good, if not, I would say better, but it's definitely just as good as hitting up the sandblaster. Um, so good, so, so good. So, yeah, so look, big mole thing. Very, very happy with this. You can see, obviously, this, this is what we're going to get to tomorrow, and that's going to start taking all the electrolysis. Grind that back down to white metal. I'll put another video up a bit later about how we prep the shafts. We've got nice shiny stainless steel shafts. Nothing quite more exciting about a shiny shaft. So, who would have thought something like that would bring so much joy and happiness, eh? But yeah, very good. We've, uh, we've had the ship right in. So we've been able to take away the, um, the shaft seals, been able to slide the shafts back a little bit and get stuck into that. So that's been really good. Um, so we're going to carry on. Once we've done this, we're going to polish the props. Alright. More shiny shafts. Love that. You can see all of this, this, uh, this is sort of what you're going for, where you can sort of sand it back, and it down, you start to see the copper, you know, you've got the blacky green there, and you start to see the actual browns, the copper here, so that's what you're trying to get to. So that was a good two, two and a half days of sanding, but definitely worth, worth all that pain, suffering, and going black. We've got a really good surface for the new anti foul we're here to. I know it's going to last. All I've got to do now is get on top of all of this electrolysis. And once we do that, it's going to be uh, very, very good. So, loving life. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying what we're actually doing here. I'll take a bit from it. I, um, I'm definitely learning as I go. I can, like, filming I know it's just terrible. I've got a really bad habit when I use the iPhone and looking to the right where the button is versus looking into the actual camera. But um, yeah, anyway, we'll see how we go. We'll keep the videos up. I hope you're learning a little bit. It's just been uh, a mad dash to the finish because I am trying to get, we're about two weeks away from Christmas. I'm trying to get anchor winch, bottom paint, shaft seals, gate valves, those four things done prior to um, prior to Christmas so I can get this boat insured back of the water, back of the mooring and when that happens I'll be able to slow down and all the work that I do with the boat I'll be able to take a lot more time and filming it, showing everybody what I'm actually doing, um, sorry look at the camera, uh, show everybody a bit more about what we're doing, um, how to do it and just make this a bit more interesting. But at the moment you can just follow my journey and uh, we're definitely getting a lot done but no easy battle. It has just been stinking hot the last uh, last week and a half. I reckon today was good. Today was only 32 degrees. Tomorrow is about 38. And then it's 40, 40, 40 for the next three days. Inside that engine room, inside that cabin, there's just no air. It's got to be at least 50, 60 degrees. So that was stinking. So um, yeah, anyway, not complaining. Getting a lot of stuff done and I'm looking forward to uh, getting this one step closer back in the water. Cheers guys, it's gonna be rad.
Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, if you want to keep up to date with live progress on the boat, just follow me on Instagram. And if you dig what I'm doing here, it'd be great if you like the uh, vid and maybe subscribe to the channel. And I'd love to hear all your comments and get some feedback. I've got a heap of content that I'll be putting up really soon. So I'll catch you again soon, guys. Cheers.